Hello, welcome to the electronics channel. In this video, we are going to look at power usage in inductors and AC circuits. And actually, as it turns out, inductors and AC circuits do not actually use any power. What happens is that as the current flows in and out of the inductors, the magnetic field around the inductor gets energized and de-energized. So the energy actually just cycles into the inductor and then back out of the inductor without ever actually getting used up. And this graph here that we will look at a little bit closer shows the voltage across the inductor in blue, the current through the inductor in red, and then the power that goes into and out of the inductor in this kind of brownish red. And you can see that the power is centered around zero. When the power is positive, the inductor is being energized. And then when the power is negative, the inductor is being de-energized. And since the cycles are equal above and below zero, the average power used by the inductor is zero. To get a better idea of how this works, let's take a look at an example. In this example, I have a three volt peak source that's operating at 60 hertz and it's being applied to a four millihenry inductor. If I write the voltage as it's applied to the inductor as in, in its sinusoidal form and it's in its equation form, I get an equation that looks like this. Three volts times sine omega t. And of course, omega is equal to two pi f and in this case, f is 60 hertz. The impedance of this inductor is equal to the reactance with a phase angle of 90 degrees which is equal to omega L, phase angle of 90 degrees, and omega being 2 pi times 60 times 4 millihenries gives me 1.51 ohms with a phase angle of 90 degrees. With that impedance given there, I can now figure out what the current is. The current through the inductor will be the voltage applied across the inductor. I'll write this out as the peak voltage with a phase angle of 0 degrees divided by the impedance of that inductor, 1.51 ohms with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Calculate this out and I get 1.99 amps phase angle minus 90 degrees. I can write that out in the equation form. So the current through the inductor as a time varying variable will be equal to this 1.99 amps sine omega t minus pi over four, where pi over four is in radians, but it's the same as 90 degrees. And with my little bit of knowledge in trigonometry, I know that will also be equal to negative 1.99 cosine omega t. And I'm writing it out in that form because I am going to plot that current over on the graph here. And knowing that it's a negative cosine function helps me recognize what the, what the shape of that equation looks like in graphical format. All right, I've added current to the graph and you can see that the current is lagging the voltage by 90 degrees. The amplitude of the current is about two amps and the amplitude of the voltage is about three volts. This video though is about power to the inductor. Instantaneous power, so power as a function of time, is equal to the voltage times the current. And I know what those two equations are. Three volts sine omega t times negative 1.99 amps cosine omega t. I'm going to rearrange these equations a little bit and I get negative three times 1.99 times sine omega t times cosine omega t. Now, know, again, knowing a little bit of trigonometry, I know that the sine omega t times cosine omega t is equal to sine of two omega t over two. So I can rewrite the equation again as negative three times 1.99 times sine of two omega t over two. Now I'm going to rewrite this equation again. I'm gonna take this two that's on the numerator here and split it into root two times root two to have this three over root two and 1.99 over root two. Combined together, that's gonna to give me a single number, which is going to be the amplitude of the power. But I'm splitting it up in this, in this way so that we can recognize that that's the voltage proportion and that's the current proportion. And both those numbers, since that three and that 1.99 are both the peak values, when I divide them by root two, that's actually the RMS value of that function. 
And then what I'm left over with is sine two omega t. So now this is a sine wave with twice the frequency of either the voltage or the current. All right, so now I've, I've rewritten out the equations for voltage, current, and power, and I have added a graph for the power. And so you can see here in the, my graph for the power that it's this sinusoidal wave with twice the frequency of either the voltage or the current. And it's a sine wave, but it's an inverted sine wave. So you can see the, that timing compared to the, the voltage and the current. And one thing to note, if that's, well, that is my zero crossing there. The time that it is below zero when the inductor is returning energy to the system is equal to the time or the, the area under this curve of when the inductor is being energized. And so those two together mean that my average power for this system, which I can do more mathematically as being the integral over one time period, so from zero to t, where t is the time, t is the period of the, the power of p of t, with respect to time. If I, if I do that, if I do the integration of this, I'm basically just taking the area under that curve and I just, and we can see from inspection that that area is equal to that area, so the sum is going to be equal to zero. The average power is equal to zero. Instantaneously, there will be some power being either added to the inductor or being taken out of the inductor, but over one time period, the average is going to be zero. That doesn't mean we have to think of about the power as being zero, and in fact, we can think of the power of an inductor as being this reactive power that's flowing back and forth. And we designate reactive power as Q. And the reactive power of an inductor is equal to that RMS voltage that's being applied to the inductor times the RMS current that's going into the inductor. And as we saw a little bit earlier, that RMS voltage is the, vo is the peak over root two and the RMS current is the peak current over root two, and that's equal to 2.99, about three. Voltage times current is watts, but it's really volt amps, and in this case, it's reactive volt amps, so the units we use are VAR, or volt amps reactive. And that quantification is the amount of power that's cycling between energizing the magnetic field and de-energizing the magnetic field. And since we know, for an inductor, we know that the reactance of an inductor is equal to the RMS voltage applied across it, divided by the RMS current that's going through it, we can take that equation and plug it into this one and come up with a couple of other forms for the reactive power of an inductor. So we can say the reactive power of an inductor is also equal to the RMS current squared times the reactance of the inductor, and it's also equal to the RMS voltage across the inductor squared divided by the reactance of the inductor. So when you are asked what is the effect on power of an inductor in a circuit, well, you can say that it's going to have some reactive power that's equal to one of these three equations. Well, actually, it's equal to all three of these equations because they're all going to give you an equal value. And you'll get a value that's in var. But one thing that you should specify is that it is inductive reactive power. Because capacitors also have reactive power, but their type of reactive power is the opposite of an inductor. So for this particular case, what I would say is Q is equal to three over root two volts times the 1.99 amps over root two, which works out to 2.99 var, and I need to indicate that it is inductive. So I hope that helps you in your understanding of the effects of inductors on power in AC circuits. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I will now leave you with an electrical nursery rhyme. Hey diddle diddle, the cap is too little, the coil makes the voltage too soon. The little source laughed to see such a short, and the power factor went out of tune.